Hello, today I'm going to teach you how you can age yourself using Adobe After Effects, face up on your phone and a free bit of software called EB Synth. Let's get started. So to start off, you're going to import your footage into a new After Effects project and then drag and drop that footage into a new composition. Next up, we're going to go up to File, Export, and then Add to Render Queue. Now, there are a few settings we're going to want to change before we export. First off, the render settings, you want to leave it on Best. Next up, you're going to want to go to Output Module, and we'll change this here to either a PNG or a JPEG sequence. And then finally, we'll change where we output our footage to. Make sure to save the sequence into its own folder. You can do this by creating a new folder like I do, or by selecting Save in Subfolder down the bottom. Next up, hit Render and wait for it to do its thing. Once that's done, you should have a folder full of either JPEG or PNG images. You're going to want to select one of these images as your reference image. Make sure it's a nice clear one where you can see a lot of your face in detail. Now, once you render that out and sent it over to your phone, you're going to want to open up the Face App app. Select the image, wait for it to process. Scroll along the bottom to where it says age, select old, obviously, once that's done, save it and send it back over to your computer where we'll carry on in EB Synth. Before heading into EB Synth, you may want to make a few tweaks in Photoshop first. So what I've done here is just opened up the original reference image from the PNG sequence, and then I'm just going to drag and drop the image we created in FaceApp on top of this original image. Notice this is a bit smaller, so I'm just going to scale it up to fit. Then I'm just going to head down to the bottom and hit the layer mask button, hit Control i on your keyboard to invert it so it disappears. And then just go in with a brush tool and paint your face back in. If there's anything you need to tweak to your image, now would be the time to do it. Mine looks fine, so we're just going to paint it back in and leave it there. Okay, so now we just need to save out this image from Photoshop. Make sure your file type matches whatever your sequence is. So if you rendered out as a JPEG, you're going to want to render it out as a JPEG. If you did a PNG like me, then save out as a PNG. And make sure your file name matches your original reference image from the sequence. So now you're going to want to open up EB Synth. And the first thing we're going to do is go to select in this video section and select our image sequence that we rendered out from After Effects. Next up, we're going to go to keyframes and we're going to select our image that we rendered out from Photoshop. Once you've done that, you're going to want to press the advance button and then change the deflicker amount from 1 to 1.5. If you named everything correctly, then these two stop boxes should have the first and last frame from your image sequence in them, and the number in this keyframe box should match the number of your reference image. And then lastly, you're going to want to change where EB Synth renders out your footage to. Create a new folder for it. I called mine render, select that folder, and then you can go down and hit run all. This may take a little while to do, but once it's done, you should have a folder full of images of you as an old person. Okay, so now we're ready to go back into After Effects. You're going to want to import this new image sequence, select the first image from the sequence, and make sure the PNG sequence box is ticked. If you don't, it's just going to come in as a single image and not as a video file. Once it's in, right click on it, go to interpret footage and then go to this bit here and change your frame rate to match whatever you shot your original footage in. For me, it's 25 frames per second. Right, so you can now drag your footage into the composition and we'll give it a little playthrough to see how it turned out. You'll notice that EB Synth didn't do a great job around the hands and it didn't do a great job of the mouth and the eyes either. This is because there were no hands in the reference image we used, so EB Synth doesn't have any information to work with. But we can easily fix this with a couple of masks. So if we go up to the top here and select the pen tool, you can now click and drag your points to create a nice curved bezier mask around your face. We'll next go down to Mask Path, hit the stopwatch, and keyframe the mask to follow the face as it moves. My face doesn't really move that much throughout the video, so I only need to create a couple of keyframes. But if there's a lot of movement in your scene, then you may need to do more. We'll then hit F on your keyboard to bring up the feather options, and then change it to 50. So that mask fixed the hand issue and got rid of any other distortion that EB Synth may have caused in the scene. Next up, we need to fix the eyes. To do this, we're going to duplicate our original footage by pressing Ctrl B, and then we'll drag that above the age layer. Zoom into the eye, hit G on your keyboard to bring up the pen tool, and draw a mask around your eye. Again, you want to click and drag your points to create a nice curved mask. Now we've done that, hit M on your keyboard to bring up Mask Path, right click on your mask layer and hit track mask. We'll then go over to this tracker window over here and click the forward frame. After Effects will now attempt to track your mask to your eye movement. However, it's not perfect. If you have any sudden eye movements like this, then the mask will slip and you'll have to fix it manually. 
I go frame by frame here and reposition the mask to follow the eye. Once that's fixed, we'll try to let After Effects track it again. After Effects was doing fine until we got to this part where my eyes open up a little bit, then it was just having a bit of difficulty following my eyes. So again, we'll go in and do it frame by frame. Once the mask is tracked, hit F on the keyboard again to bring up feather options, and I'm just going to set it to a value of 7. So that's one eye done. Now all you have to do is that exact same process all over again for the second eye. I'll fast forward through this bit. Once you finish the second eye, you're ready to render. Okay, you finished. Now it's all done, you should have something that looks a little bit like this. Right, so that's it, we're done. Um, if there's something you'd like to see me do a tutorial on in the future, then go ahead and comment it down below. If not, then don't. That's fine also, I guess. Um, yeah. Bye.